Yeah. Well, and so one of the nurses says something to the effect of, you know, if, if we're not coming right to you, you should be happy. Where you should really worry is we come running to see you. Yes. <laughs> that, that's yes. that's when you should get very nervous. Hello and welcome yeah. to the Art of Emergency Nursing podcast. This is where we share stories for inspiration, entertainment and encouragement because we all know emergency nurses have the best stories. Now here's your host, Kevin McFarland. Hey everyone, Kevin McFarland here from the Art of Emergency Nursing, and thank you for listening to the podcast. I have such an incredible episode for you today. If you're listening to this episode in real time, then you probably already know that it is Emergency Nursing Week. Not only that, this podcast episode is going to be released on Emergency Nursing Day. So with that, I want to take a minute and thank you for the dedication to your community and thank you from the people that you serve. On behalf of the countless lives that each of you have touched, I want to say thank you for being an ER nurse. I appreciate what you do more than I could ever tell you. Now, it's not every day as a podcaster you get to interview an international best-selling author with more than 300 million books sold. Not only that, but a highly decorated Army Ranger who's also a best-selling author. Have I got a treat for you today. On October 11th, international bestselling author James Patterson and Matt Eversman released a book about you, emergency nurses. The book's title is ER Nurses. This book is incredible. I promise you that you are going to resonate with every single story in this book. Now stick around to the end of the podcast. I'm going to tell you how you can win your very own copy of this incredible book from yours truly. Enjoy this incredible episode with James Patterson and Matt Eversman. Well, I am super excited uh, to get a chance to talk to you guys on one, the day of the release of the book and, and on Emergency Nursing Week. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The timing couldn't be more perfect. So that is super exciting, super exciting for me. So, yeah, well, hopefully it'll do some good. I think we like to draw a lot of attention to what nurses are doing. You know, we Matt and I did a book, uh, Walk in Our Combat Boots, and it had to do with getting people to understand, really understand the military. And, you know, right now with nurses, you know, people will sit there and clap and bang pots with, you know, spoons and whatever. But I don't think they really understand w- you know, what nurses do and how difficult it is and how, how stunningly difficult it is. Now, you, you mentioned the first book, Walk in My Combat Boots, and in, in reading that book, this may be my personal bias, uh, but to me, some of the most compelling stories in there were from the medics and the nurses. Is that what inspired you to do this ER nursing book? Matt? Well, I, I mean, I, I couldn't speak for Jim, but I think that this idea, uh, you know, of service, you know, this selfless service in, in these professions that, uh, you know, everyone says they think they know, but they really don't. I mean, I think that was, but I, if I recall, Jim, I think, we, you know, we had, we had talked about this some time ago. I, I, you know, the whole COVID yeah. year throws me off. There are some similarities. One of the things that Matt and I discovered when we were doing combat boots is, and what makes, I think, both of these books so different and powerful is that we would do, Matt would do, mostly Matt would do these very long interviews, uh, 40 or 50 pages, and then we would cut them down into these five or six page stories, uh, which uh, nobody's, I don't think anybody's done it that way before. And it makes these things so readable. It's like, you know, it's like getting 50 books in one book, because every one of these is a self-contained thing where you really feel this nurse uh, and you feel what the nurse has been through and, and maybe one or two of the nurses, you know, most compelling stories. And, you know, our mission was at the end of this, that uh, nurses would say Everson and Patterson got it right. They told our story. And a lot of times with with nurses and also obviously with com- people coming back from combat, they don't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. OK, but they talk to Matt and, and, and we try to get those stories right so that the world could understand and hear uh, what nurses have to say. And then the other piece of it for, for the general public is. You know, if, if if they don't, we don't think they understand what nurses do. And, and we think at the end of this book, they, they'll get it. They'll get it. So, so I got to tell you, I was absolutely blown away by the book. Some of the nurses, some of the stories really resonated with me. I could picture myself being there or, or I have been there. Uh, in many of these situations, they sound very similar to, to my experience. And to me, that was, that was really, really something kind of cool to see. 
Yeah, um, thank you. And and you're right. Like these are stories that that nurses typically don't talk out of out of you know out of their own little tribe. So you know nurses talk to each other to uh, other nurses about stories like this, but we typically don't talk to the the rest of the public, the civilians that that aren't there every yeah. day, and tell yeah. them these these stories. They don't want to hear these stories. Some of these stories are heartbreaking. They they do want to hear them, but but it's it's hard, I think, for the nurses to come home from work and tell them. But people do want to hear. I mean, that's why you have the incredible popularity of shows like ER and mm-hmm. and Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, and, and which are which are a little, you know, like Grey's Anatomy. The typical thing is uh, a busload of nuns has been hit by uh, you know uh, uh, bikers, and and a nurse and, and and a nun and a biker will fall in love by the end of the show. But this right. this is a little more real than that. Yeah, this is this is way more real. I got to tell you, um, it, it some of the, some of the stories I got it really really resonated with me. There's a, a story of a young lady named Shannon that's in your in your book, and I happen to know Shannon. Uh, one one thing that probably makes this uh, interview a little unique for you guys is is I know people in the book, uh, oh, yeah. which which is thrilling for me. Uh, and and I got a chance to you know in preparing for this interview, I was like. I want to talk to a couple of the people who who were in the book, and one of them was Shannon. And and Shannon, in her in her story, talks about the very first time she did CPR, and mm-hmm. I re- remembered and was brought back immediately to the very first time I did CPR. Yeah. The first time you feel those ribs crack underneath your hands, it's terrifying. You're like, oh my gosh, I did this wrong, and they're like, you did a good job. Keep going, mm-hmm. faster, mm-hmm. harder, mm-hmm. and. And it, it, this really kind of brought me right into that. like, yeah. And how school can't totally oh. prepare you for what you're going to deal with. No, nursing school doesn't prepare you to be an ER nurse. It just doesn't. And a couple people said that in the book. Yeah. Um, nothing does. Nothing does other than being there and having the time with amazing preceptors and people who've, who've already been there. So that was uh, that really some of the stories I was like, I, I've been there. I've done that. Um, which was really exciting for me. Now, Matt, to your credit, I got to tell you, uh, both both the folks I talked to, uh, I spoke to Shannon and I spoke to Mike Hastings, and both of them were very complimentary about how comfortable you made them feel during the interview. Because um, I was curious about the interview process. Like, what? how did this go? Um, I do a podcast about emergency nursing where we just kind of, I get them on Zoom like this and we just kind of shoot the breeze and then we, we post it, but, but for someone from outside the emergency nursing community, that had to be a little uncomfortable for them, but they said you made it really comfortable. Well, first of all, thank you for, for sharing that. I mean, what a great uh, compliment. Uh, seriously, that, that, that's very, very thoughtful. Um, I, you know, I, I could only say this. I, I, I must, you know, not to pat myself, but I, I just tried to relate any of my experiences on the battlefield, you know, with a little, you know, a, a smidge of trauma experience that I could at least look, you know, if I were seeing them face to face, I could look them in the eye and say, I do know kind of what it's like to have, you know, blood on your hands. So literally or figuratively and and hopefully that worked. But, you know, like Jim said, you all, uh, first of all, angels among us, without a doubt. And second of all, you know, like soldiers, you do so much, you've forgotten so much that most of us would cringe, cry, or get sick to our stomachs over. And yet you're you're just so matter of fact about it. And I think, you know, if we could just have a start an easy conversation, you know, people are 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 quite happy to 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 share a little bit, um, as you know. And uh, but no, thank you. That that what a what a what a great um you know second part of my day. The first obviously having the book come out, but uh, very thoughtful. <laughs> I got to tell you, they, uh, you guys, you guys just nailed it. You just nailed this, this, uh, this profession that I love. This, this career, and and so many of the people in the book, I could absolutely relate to. And one of the things that that I found was so many in the so many people in the books talked about nursing, feeling like nursing was their calling. And um, I, you know, I feel the same way. And I, what was your thought? And and did you get that in just talking to these people and how passionate they were about? this topic? Well, if I, Jim, I just jump in yeah, on the yeah, front yeah. end. You, you know, it, it, it was, it, you know, it was just, I, I, in fact, I think I probably said this to Jim, you know, off and on throughout the whole production, you know, of interviewing that 
it, it almost was like talking to soldiers. It's like just a different profession. And generally, you know, they're not being shot at, except for that John Antonelli, I think. Uh, but, you know, that they're, they're that committed. Everybody came in maybe for a slightly different reason. But once they there and got there, particularly, you know, when their their careers brought them to this apex called the ER, you know, it was all in or nothing. And, uh, you know, they, they legitimately I, I found that they, they talk about that mission, this life saving mission, like soldiers talk about you know, fighting on the battlefield. And that's yeah. legitimate. That's not hyperbole. Uh, so yeah. I saw that on uh, the, on my side of it. And then Jim, of course, got to, you know, I deliver the Sunday papers. He, he'd get to see him and um, continue. And yeah, Matt would come in there. with these, uh, you know, 200 pages of interviews, and then we have to turn them into shorter, more digestible pieces. And, you know, you just saw with the passion, there was one, uh, uh, and I just, the language was, and a lot of times the language is so rich that the people use in terms of putting you in the scene. And this one person was having difficulty getting into the profession and 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 contacted, kept contacting this one hospital or uh, over and over again and said, I will do anything. I will come in and lick the floors because that's how passionate I am about, about becoming a nurse. And, and you would see that again and again and again. And I, one of the reasons that I got into this is that one of my best friends forever and ever and ever, I grew up in Newburgh, New York, and she ran the emergency room there for like 40 years. No kidding. Uh, died recently, but I mean, I, I, and she did tell me her stories for 40 years. I've been, I've been listening to Marlene's story. So I feel like I've been there in that sense. Is that what sparked your interest in this topic? It's a piece of it. It's a piece of it for sure. Yeah. And then, you know, and, and I've been in hospitals the last, a couple of times in the last few years and uh, Mayo Clinic and then in Columbia Presbyterian in New York. And, I, you know, you just get knocked out and knocked out by the people that are there. Uh, these weren't emergency room situations, but just general hospital things. Yeah. I mean, uh, hospitals in general, nurses in general, amazing, amazing, do an amazing job taking care of folks. ER is just a little bit different. I think you guys really taught yeah. that, which is really, yeah. really yeah. good. So. Yeah, there's nothing like it. And, you know, it, it, one of the things, I mean, the publisher sent, sent the book out for blurbs and, and you never know what's going to come back. But I, I have to say, I mean, a couple of the things that came back, they were so heartfelt. You know, Sanjay Gupta, smart dude. I mean, whether you're you like CNN or not. But he said that, you know, as a trauma neurosurgeon, I've witnessed the compassion, the work ethic, and the selflessness of our nurses in countless situations. And he said it just captured beautifully. And then Sebastian Younger, who's a very, very good writer, he wrote The Perfect Storm. And he said that there are account of the, of the twilight world between life and death that nurses inhabit is one of the most moving things he's ever read. And, and, and then he said something which is, is, is really stunning when you think about it. He said, I could not stop reading it. And when I was done, I felt like I was changed forever. And, you know, as a, as a writer, uh, writer, editor, whatever Matt and I did in this damn thing, it's, it's just stunning to, to, have, to have people respond that way. And, and what you said, uh, Kevin, you know, that, that we nailed it. I mean, that's an unbelievable compliment. And I hope people that are listening and watching uh, will, will, you know, get, get their hands on the book and get it out to other people. Uh, uh, because it is, it's just, it's a powerful piece. I mean, I do, I've done a lot of books, this and combat boots are the only two important books I've ever done. These are important. It's important when you can do a book or a movie or whatever the heck it is. And at the end of it, people go, you know what? I really actually understand something I didn't understand before. I mean, that's really, that's, that's something else. Well, I, it, that's, and, and that is really, I think they will. I think people will understand. Um, Shannon Kane, who is one of your, uh, one of the people you interviewed, um, told me we were talking yesterday and she told me that she shared the book with her mom. And, um, and she said, you know, she gave it to her mom and her mom read it cover to cover and was like, I had no idea that this was what your job was like. Oh, I had no yeah. idea. And, yeah. and to me, like, for, for, for your mom to say that when you're, you're thinking, cause, cause the reality is, is we don't go home and tell, we, we go home and tell some stories to our family, but we don't tell all the stories. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and oftentimes, oftentimes, cause, cause not everybody wants all the stories. They yeah. want the great stories of, Hey, everything went well. You made a good save. And that, that always sounds cool, but there's some, I, days think, I think that's a usually important use of the book and also combat yeah. boots where we would hear about, 
people coming back and giving it to their spouses so that their spouses would understand. Yeah. Yeah. Or, I, or family members, mothers, parents, sisters, you know, whatever. Heck. So, okay, yes, exactly. I, I get it. I understand now for the first time what you do for a living. It's unbelievable. How, Mr. Patterson, how did it feel for you seeing these stories and reading these stories uh, and, and, you know, living them and, and crafting them to the way you did? It's amazing how well crafted these stories are. How did that, how did that feel to you reading these stories? Well, I, I, you know, never see? we, starting with combat boots, just this notion of, and, and, and it's kind of the way I do all of my books where it's, it's very tight with Alex Cross, Women's Murder Club, very tight, try to tell these stories as, you know, because that's the way the world is now. You have to hold people's attention. And, you know, we, we didn't want to do, you know, these 40 or 50 page things on an individual where you could kind of get a little tired of it and instead just keep it incredibly lively and true and honest. And that, but so that's what we try to do in terms of compressing everything uh, and, and just using the language of the people who, who, who met interviewed. One of the things that's incredibly, the, the stories are, some of the stories are very short, but they're, they're powerful and they're so can, they're so concise. The yeah. way they're crafted is I'm, um, I really and the stories, I mean, this thing is really all about the stories and it ranges from and we try not to get tied down in COVID. In fact, we, in, with the interviews, we agreed we wouldn't to ask, ask anybody about COVID till the end of the interviews. But there was a, and this came up several times about, you know, how during COVID that interpersonal thing started, it just was going away. And this one nurse talked about just having having the feel I had to hold this person's hand. I had to hold their hand as they were as they were dying, uh, and, and and then and, and the stories go from the just unbelievably oh my god what a what a what a wonderful experience that was to to the very dark things. But one of the most wonderful ones, and there are many, uh, is is you know this kid came in, little kid, two year old, two year old who had been shot in the chest, and they you know that this kid is not going to make it, and then you know ten days or so later. Uh, the nurse saw this kid running down the hallway in a Superman outfit. And it's like, geez, you know, <laughs> it's, it worked. <laughs> and we, we saved somebody, you know, and then, and then some of the, you know, the darker ones, uh, obviously, and there's a lot of that. And just that notion of in the end, God wins. Yeah. Uh, we, and, and sometimes for nurses, that's hard to accept because we, yeah, sure. you know, and, and I don't think the public always sees that we, and, and one of the things we've, we've done is, we try to get families in, and this is mentioned in the book that we try to bring families in during a resuscitation so they can see how hard we're working. They can see what the team's doing to save them. We yeah. don't want them to think some magic's happening behind a door and then either they come out and tell me my loved one made it or not. Yeah. Um, we want them to see what we're going through and what we're doing and the blood, sweat, and tears we're putting into this. Yeah. Um, yeah. In, a, in a couple of the stories, they talk about nurses kind of compartmentalizing that those feelings. One of the things, one of the, I think one of the themes in the, the book is you know, that we kind of compartmentalize that, but ultimately that's got to come out or it's going to come out one way or another anyway. Yeah. Well, hopefully that'll help that too, Matt. You want to talk a little bit about that, you know, because Matt is very involved in dealing with, with the military when they come back yep. and, and trying to, to help them to, to fit in easier now and, and PTSD and a couple of things. You want to talk a little bit about how that relates to this book, Matt? Yeah, yeah no, I was literally just going to chime in for a second that, you know, Kevin, what was interesting is that uh, I found with so many of these nurses and I preface this by saying, you know, as you said, they compartmentalize all of them, all of you do, just like soldiers for the most part, except, you know, for 20 years, we've been telling soldiers it's okay to, to share and to talk about these battlefield experiences, which are very acute, as you know, and, and horrible and cause some people some great distress and anxiety. And what I found, and I remember talking to Jim about it, I said, you know, I, 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 some of these are making me, uh, and I hate to say like a depressed, but it was so dark. You know, you deal with death every day and then you talk to people, you know, for a 10 or 12 days and all they're talking about are the just the horrific experience of dealing with death. And it just got me to the point of like, you know, who's looking out for our nurses? You know, if we're looking out for soldiers and we're saying it's okay, but I'm like, I, I, these nurses, it, it really concerns me. And I shared it with Jim, you know, that I, 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 I know they're tough and I know they're strong. They're going to go out and be supermen and super women. But man, I, I'm, 
I, I worry, you know, the mental and emotional fitness uh, at times, because it's that, that monster in the closet is going to jump out. Anyway, that long answer to the question, I, I, I saw it a lot and I talked to him a lot. And there were some I would call back the next day just literally to check in and say, okay, hey, you okay, you go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. It's um and it's amazing. So you, you so you guys started did you guys start planning this book pre-COVID? Because I know during COVID, a lot of people were were um, you know, we were, you know, championing nurses as heroes. And and at first I kind of thought maybe this book was gonna be kind of kind of based on that. But I'm I'm happy to to find out that like COVID is a is a character in the book, um, but it's a small character. It, this is not a COVID book at no, all. We didn't this want is, it to be. We wanted, and, we wanted this to be a nurse book. We, we wanted to count. And that's why, as I said, we really uh, we didn't in the interviews, we, we didn't deal with COVID to the end of the interviews. Yeah. And if I remember, Jim, I, I, I and again, we we have that whole year of 2020 that just like, you know, vaporized. But I, I think we were kicking it around a little bit over towards the end of combat. Boot. Oh, I we were. Somewhere yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. before. And then yeah. we actually started it in, in 2020. But I think we did. I, I, I don't no, know. We did. I, we did for sure. Yeah. Now, yeah. how do you how do you think this book compared to compared to, to to combat boots? Like I like what are the what what are the similarities versus the some of the things that made them different? Yeah, Matt. Wow, that, that's a tough one. Uh, well, I tell you what, it's more intense. The nurse ER nurses is more intense in combat, which is which is something. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. I think a lot of people wouldn't you know really you know the highs and the lows and you know it's just it's you know one of the things which is fascinating to me and I wasn't expecting this, but if I was gonna or Matt and I were if we were gonna write a book about the underbelly of America. Like what's really going on? We wouldn't know where to go. Like, what do you do? Just you know, go to neighborhoods. Who's the craziest person in the neighborhood? Go to emergency rooms. Yeah, we are. They are, are seeing this every day. The regulars, the you know, uh, the first time I read one of the stories where somebody was talking about a, a child being burned, I went, "Well, that's really." And then I see it's like a common occurrence. Yeah, it's not People, uncommon burning their children with yeah. lighters and, you know, whatever, uh, stoves and radiators. And, you know, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there that people people don't know what's going on in the world, which is also interesting uh, to me. Yeah. And it's one of the things that makes this book so, so powerful. Okay, just, uh, just a quick bolt on to Jim's comment. You know, this, this idea, too, of, you know, as I – Talk to a lot of, you know, to all the soldiers, you know, in their interviews. And, you know, eventually, after you kind of get through a little bit of the history, what would come out at the end would be an experience on the battlefield. You know, generally speaking, it might not be there I was in Fallujah, but you know, there was always, you know, kind of one highlighted, you know, piece here. And yet that when I talk to the nurses, you know, these nurses, they don't deploy and come back. They, they deploy every day. You know, so this, you talk to them and it's ad infinitum kind of, you know, their experience, it never ends. And, you know, that treadmill of, man, you know, we're, we're you know, they've been doing it for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, uh, dealing with the same thing the soldiers seen on the battlefield. So that's kind of a, I guess, my my two cents of the really the yeah. difference between them. Uh, and one of the things that that that's that stood out to me, too, as a theme in the book and a couple of the nurses that you interviewed talked about how, you know, we, we go through all that and then we have to compartmentalize that, shut that down. And we got to walk into the next room with a big smile on our face, and say, how, how, what can we do for you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that that's tough. Sometimes that's really, really hard. Sometimes that's really, really hard. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and some of those stories that your, your, your peers shared, Kevin, of uh, that exact thing, except somebody yelling at you, mm -hmm. you know, because you didn't have a baby aspirin or a blanket or whatever. I mean, it, it drives you insane. You're listening to it. You're like, why, how do you not, you know. And they don't understand where, you know, where, what that nurse had just been doing for the last 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. I had a, I had a case once where a woman was walking out and I was the house supervisor and she was like, yeah, we waited for a really long time. And I wanted to say, yeah, I, I was supposed to come see you, but I was taking care of a coding patient next door. But I'm here now, and I'm sorry you want to leave, and and you know we'll stick around and we'll see you, or you can go see your doctor in the morning because you're fine. Um, <laughs> but it's yeah. it, and it and, and that and that's an everyday that's an everyday thing. Sure. Like, you know the stories I read that talked about that, like I was like that 
that's what happens. Yeah. Like, well, and so one of the nurses says something to the effect of, you know, if, if we're not coming right to you, you should be happy. Where you should really worry is we come running to see you. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's yeah. that's when you should get very nervous. Yeah. Mr. Patterson, is there a particular story that really stuck with you? You know, it, it, it varies. It's all over in terms of the, the, the some that are, you know, like the, the, the Superman kid. I love that story. Um, the um, there were a couple of stories. The one where uh, the husband was dying, and that and and the nurse had gotten close to the husband and wife, and and she said, "Well, what what would really make your husband, you know, this these last few hours or last day special?" And she said, "Oh, if he could just see his dog." And she said, "Well, I shouldn't, and I couldn't, but I will." And she brought the dog in to to be with the husband you know stuff like that which is very very stunning and then i mean some of the the the, the darker ones like the uh this uh uh, uh black nurse and a, a black helicopter pilot and they were i think it was oklahoma matt you'd know for yeah. sure and yeah. they're going for this emergency call and they come in close to this farm and there's all swastikas and you know, uh, uh, white power things all over the bar, you know, and they're like, oh, man. But they get down and they and they help these people. You know, that was that was a stunning story. There are a lot of stories. I mean, every one of these people had had one or two just amazing stories, like uh, uh, one of the nurses in, in, in Detroit who uh, went out and there was Kevorkian's uh, uh, van out there. And, you know. And the police, you know, arresting Kevorkian and, you know, amazing, amazing stuff. And, they, and, and, they, and the other thing, as Matt knows, is all of them say, why, why are you talking to me? I don't have any stories. Yeah, yeah. that's usually kind of how it starts is, you know, yeah. when I, whenever I, I ask a nurse to be on the podcast, they'll, they'll first start and say, well, you know, I don't really have any really good stories to tell. I'm like, well, let's just talk and see where it goes. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, 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 then, it, and then next thing you know, you're like going, what? Oh yeah, you don't have any good stories to tell. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Everyone's yeah, got yeah, good yeah, stories yeah. to tell. We, uh, me and a group of nurses were were sitting in a bar at a nursing conference one day, and we were kind of telling stories. And, and nurses, probably not unlike soldiers, sometimes tell those kind of let me let me tell you about this, let me tell you about that, and kind of those one upper stories. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and that's what inspired me to do this podcast and be like let's tell nursing stories because people love those. I, I was I was sitting there at the table thinking to myself, now I would listen to this as a podcast. And I was like, there you go. It's a great idea. So I, it's, it's, it's been a blast and oh my gosh, your book just absolutely resonates with me. It's going to resonate with the, the emergency nurses so much. It really is. And, ho- and hopefully a lot of people that, as I say, I mean, one of the great values here. I think is people who aren't nurses understanding what it's all about, family members, et cetera. Uh, you know, uh, when we did the combat uh, uh, book, uh, one of my best friends from high school who had been in Vietnam and he called me up, he said, you know, I've liked a lot of your novels, but he said this thing. And he said, I went, got, went back and got in contact with half a dozen people that I went to was you know, in, in Nam with. And uh, we just shared these stories in the book. Mm. Yeah. 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 It's um yeah, I I I think the camaraderie um, amongst ER nurses is pretty incredible and and for the public to get a little glimpse into that to me is just spectacular. That's Good. One question I have for you, how did you select the nurses that you, you interviewed? Well, we had we had a number of contact places. Um my wife and I, we have a bunch of scholarships at schools and and some nursing scholarships. So University of Wisconsin, University of Florida. So that was a piece of it. Who do you know? Who can we talk to? That kind of thing. And and as Matt would say, I mean, you you, you talk to somebody and they know somebody else. Oh, you gotta talk to Harry, or you gotta talk to Sally, you gotta talk to, you know, whatever. And 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 the universe just kept getting larger and larger. Matt, you, you can laugh. Yeah, no, it's just listen, if if you talk as you, you know, undoubtedly, you know, you, you talk to a good person that you have a good time with. Chances are pretty good. Their friends are going to be just as good, if not better. And that we played that. And like Jim said, you know, we had a lot of, you know, contacts in the, you know, from the military into the emergency management world. And, um, you know, it kind of snowballed from there. But We reached uh, out online a little bit to bring even more people in. Yeah. And we, we wanted to go across the country, you know, and get, get a pretty good, you know, East Coast, Middle, South, you know, whatever, which I think we did. Yeah. Even even my old hometown of Albuquerque was represented. There's a nurse that was a was a tech in Albuquerque. And I, I remember thinking to myself, 
that's how I got my start in emergency nursing. I uh, probably uh, know, probably would have known this guy if our you know timing was the same time. So it is. Um, I can't tell you guys how much I enjoyed this book. I, I burned through this book over the weekend, and oh my gosh, like so many people are going to be getting this as Christmas presents this year. So, yeah. well, I think you know one of the interesting things about it is, and, and I think that you know what what Matt and I have to do is sometimes people go, oh, you know, some interviews, it won't be that. No, these are really interesting. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you don't, you don't necessarily think it's going to be as good as it is. Yeah. It's, it's one of those. I, I can, I can only imagine that when you're doing that interview and you're, you're hearing these stories and you're like going, Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, Oh, and, and I just hanging on the end of your seat going, and then what? Uh, and, and so many through some of these stories, that's exactly what I was doing. And, and some of the stories I've, I'm sitting there thinking to myself as, a, as an ER nurse, I'm sitting there going, okay, I can kind of predict how this is going to end. And then some of them, I was like, well, didn't see that coming. Uh, uh, wouldn't have, wouldn't yeah. have guessed that. So uh, you guys, you guys kept me on my toes. So that, I, I'm blown away at how good this book is. And I know the emergency nursing community is super excited about it. Everyone has been pinging me on social media saying, Hey, what do you know? You and, and sharing the book and sharing, you know, you, yeah. you guys came and did the ENA uh, closing at the ENA conference, which was spectacular. I'm humbled by your interest in what we do. And I'm super excited. Well, we're humbled by what you do. <laughs> so, Absolutely. One more question. What do you hope the nurses take away from this book? And what do you hope the public takes away from this book? Matt? Um, but, you know, I was just thinking on the front end, Kevin, you know, we, we were able to get uh, combat boots up to West Point because we thought, you know what, every That's future cool. Army officer needs to read this book about mm -hmm. who they're going to be leading. And I think we're, 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 we're slowly able now to get it out to the medical community because I think, you know, uh, my hope would be one kind of the play on what Jim said that everybody says, yeah, man, they got it right. And I'm a new nurse or I'm in, in nursing school. I get a really, really heartfelt look at what I'm getting into. And, you know, I, I would hope uh, that it would become maybe a recruiting tool and in some way, shape or form that we could get it in, you know, out and broadcast amongst the medical uh, education community. Cause uh, yeah, I, think I hadn't really thought of it, but the notion of getting this into nursing schools, um, which sometimes is hard because it's, yeah. it's difficult to get people to change and look at new things. But I think, I think almost anybody in nursing school would go like, that was a very valuable book to have read. So yeah. I, I got to tell you, one, one of the things I do in, in addition to being an ER nurse, I'm a, a part-time nursing educator. And um, one of the things I was thinking was my, my next student who tells me that they want to be an ER nurse is going to get a copy of this book and, and then say, okay, do you, do you still want to be an ER nurse? And this is either what ER is one of those things that you either come in there and you find your passion. And you, one of the, yeah. one of the, one of the people in the, the book said, I found my family, I found my tribe. And I've, always felt that way. Like from the, yeah. the, my first day in the emergency department, I was like, these are my people. Like I, I, I resonate with these people and, yeah. and so many do, but some don't. And, and that's okay too. Some people come and find their, you know, they say, Hey, you know, well, what? Look, it's, it's a hard thing, but you, 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 I think people who are doing it know that, that they have a purpose in life. And any nurse does, but I think, you know, I think ER nurses get that extra little something more. Um, in, in my opinion, what do you hope the general public, the general public gets out of this book? Once again, that they just understand how unbelievable these people are. They're doing this job, understand the job. You know, we, we had this thing um, when we, with combat boots about the next time you thank somebody for your service, you'll know what you're thanking them for. Yeah. Uh, similarly here, if you're thanking also, especially with ER, where a lot of times the people leave and they never come, you know what I mean? Uh, Go back and thank these people, man. Yeah. <laughs> Go back and thank them because it means so much. And a lot of people don't think to do it. Oh my God, this person, they got me through. They saved my life, whatever the heck it is. Go, go thank these people. Yeah, for sure. For sure. One last thing I just wanted to mention to you guys that, that um, Mike Hastings, who uh, was the national ENA president, um, who was one of the, the folks you interviewed yeah. uh, talked about how invigorating it was to share those stories 
um, and how much it, it meant to him to share those stories. And it reminded him how much he loved being a nurse. Mm-hmm. And, and it did for me too. This, this book reminded me what I love about being an ER nurse. So, um, well, there, you know, there you go. There you go, man. I mean, that's, that's the best and, uh, and, and, and stated better than, than we could in terms of what we'd like nurses to take out of the book. That's, yeah, that's, that's certainly what I took out of it. Um, it, it really is. You guys, you guys nailed it. You guys got it. I'm just blown away and impressed. Thank you for that, Kevin. Like Jim said, that's the greatest compliment, you know, coming from somebody in the community. For those of you who are listening, I can't recommend enough for you to go get this book. You, you're, you're going to feel this book uh, more than, than I can possibly tell you. I burned through this book fast over the weekend, gentlemen, and it was just, and my, my wife picked it up. My wife's not medical. My wife picked it up and she was kind of thumbing through it. And she's like, this is good. This is good. I'm not sure I was ready for this particular page, but this is really good. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, and she's excited to read it too. So Good. Um, it's, I, I, I really appreciate the, the thought and the heart that went into this and the heart that you got out of it, uh, of the, of the nurses is really something you, I'm, I'm blown away. Bye. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. I want to say a big thank you to these guys for their interest in emergency nursing. And I really hope that you enjoyed this episode dedicated to you, the ER nurse. If you would like to win a copy of this amazing book, share this episode and tag the podcast on Facebook. I'll select a winner on October 26th and send you a copy of this book. Thanks as always for listening. And don't forget to leave a rating and review because that's how people find the show. Have a great one.